and does it ends well. Super. And um, you know, I'm not going to say that I, I think that every single thing I read was, you know, inspired, but um, I was raised Christian, of course, sure. in America. In the U.S., yes, yeah. excellent. In the America. deep south, may I say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how did I guess that? Uh, because... No, because no, well, no, because but I, I'm very familiar with the fact that people in the south of the U.S. they're quite a bit taken by the Christian concept, this fundamentalist, inerrantist approach to the New Testament, which is total nonsensical, and the Islamic message, the cohesive message of Islam, as you cohesive made. Straight through, we don't, you don't, in the Quran, you don't have like a, 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 a tyrannical God of the Old Testament. You know, explicitly like supposedly much more friendlier God in the New Testament. Yes. God is God. Precisely. So what we then say is Islam makes perfect sense in terms of the co very concept of God yes. and the very initiation of God via scripture and so forth. And I have no problem saying that, you know, God, there's only one God and Allah is his messenger. No, wow. But, but do, do you know something of more of consequence? It bemuses me to the point of extremity that when you read the New Testament, how on earth Christians conclude that Jesus is God even within the New Testament is mind blowing for me. So when I read through it and I look at the verses very carefully, I don't get that conclusion that he's God. Rather, for example, in John 17, 3, one of the favorite verses that yes. Muslims like to use, it makes it absolutely clear that there's only one God and he's a messenger of God. Exactly. The Islamic. The whole concept that, and also, another thing that does not make sense is that. Supposed to be the Son of God, but you've had to nail him to a cross to, to forgive me for my sins. God doesn't work like that. It's not a Precisely, anymore. but of more consequence, which is this is what I mean. Just reading what even terms such as Son of God versus God the Son. I mean, it bemuses me why people can't get their head around basic concept. So it's the, the term Son of God is defined in Matthew chapter five verse nine. It states that the, the blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. So anyone who does God's work is given that title. Yes. Of more consequence, the term son of God is interchangeable with the title prophet of God, messiah or messenger. In the, deep, in the Dead Sea Scrolls from after yes. found in, in, yeah. in Egypt, did you know these were interchangeable titles? And we can even see where Christ defines this in John chapter 10 verse 33 where he says to the Jews who accuse him of blasphemy, is it not written in your scriptures that you are God's? And to whomever the word of God has been sent, that I have said I'm the son of God. In That's every day. Precisely, but what he's trying to show that is, even in your Old Testament, in Psalm 82, 6, people were referred to as God's, those who represent God. But they were never the almighty God. Then you get the term God the Son. Now this yes. is a subtle distinction. The term of God the Son is never used for Christ in the New Testament no. or for that matter for anyone else. No. This is a later addition in Christian history but again that term is never used. So when you apply the term Son of God, as you correctly said, dying for the sins of mankind, when he never came with that message, no. rather his every action, just, just say the Christian concept is rather perverse, that he was a willing sacrificial lamb, happy and ready to die for the sins of mankind. However, his every action in the lead up to his supposed right. was to the fighting of it, precisely. Yes. Yes. So why if he was, and then they, bizarrely Christians use the analogy of Isaac and how he's a typology, but what yes. do we observe from Isaac? We observe from the Hebraisms at that time, anyone who has a close brush with death, in the Jewish idiomatic term, mm -hmm. meant someone who actually died who hadn't died. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but the one who has a close brush with death is as if one died, however one does not die. And what do we get from the from the message? Yeah, that's going to be focused. You don't want to be in there. You, I don't care. You don't, you don't mind. Excellent. So it's interesting because, I mean, without trying to batter the Bible into the point of oblivion, I would be more, like you said earlier, maybe about you're not sure about every single facet of divinely inspired origin of the Quran, but we believe it is because it's the express verbatim word of God, and you said many positive things about it. So what would incline you for that which you are uncertain of? Further study. Further study. So is anything particular? Makes sense. And, and discover that myself, but I'm, I'm already on this quest. Super. You know? And I'd like to perhaps um, give you a positive direction that you can go to, mm -hmm. because if you singularly believe that there is only one true God, yeah, there is. Yeah. and that God sends messengers, of which Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is God's yes. final messenger, preceding the line of prophets who came before him, i.e., oh. Jesus, Abraham, Noah, yes. Noah, and 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 oh, Moses, and so Jesus forth. Fantastic. So by proxy, that makes you a Muslim. I know it sounds Everybody ridiculous, does. and it's true. And it's absolutely true. If, if everyone wants to need the same thing, there must yeah. be some truth to it. Yeah. So they're all saying the same thing. 
It's a simple equation. Now, of more consequence, and this is very interesting, that we pray five times a day, as you're aware, of course. by bowing and prostrating to God. And of more consequence, this is something that the prophets of the Old Testament perform the prayers exactly the same way that we Muslims perform it. Mm. If you mention it, in, which is a verse I was unfamiliar with, I was more citing like Psalm 90. You certainly can, just two seconds. Ahi, can I have a Quran, please? Sorry. So, uh, what's you know? It, is it, um, is it, uh, is it seen as, as a bad or sacrilegious to write in it? No. Oh. It's the English translation. I have a really so, I have to take notes. Yeah, I make have a beautiful uh, original, like a, a Arabic, Arabic copy. With English translation. Yeah. Fabulous. But what I would suggest you do is, like I said, our claim is that all the prophets were Muslims. Mm. Now, this may sound very bizarre to lots of people because they understood they came from the line of the Jews. However, if we notice in the Old Testament for Moses and the New Testament for, for Jesus, that which was revealed to them, they never said that this is out. For example, Moses never said, I have finalized the faith for you called Judaism. Mm. Neither did Christ say, I have now changed, because he was born from the ethnic line of the Jews. Mm -hmm. However, he did not then say that I've given you a religion called Christianity. So what we argue is these prophets were all Muslims. So what we would ask Christians particularly is who, who was Abraham when there was no Judaism or there was no Christianity? We say he was a Muslim. How do we say that? Because he is one who submitted his will to God Almighty. So what we say it's right, one true, God. one true God, which by proxy makes one a Muslim. So Adam would have been a Muslim. The Quran comes as the final revelation sent by God to mankind and completes its format within Islam. So it's consequential to Adam all the way through to the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. That lady wants a Quran as well. Yeah. That this lady would like a Quran as well. Yeah. So yeah, sorry, I beg your pardon. He, he wants to give you very Thank you. Yeah, this is nice. It makes it wants to make it look professional for you. Okay, so so in which case um, we said they were prophets and they prayed the way we prayed. Yes. They even said things which we say in our prayers that they, that they said. I was amazed to read in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 4 and 6 that when God's praises are, 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 are done in the prayer and then they bow and prostrate to God in the exact same way as we do. And then when we offer the prayers, we conclude by saying Amin, which is a variation of Amen. Mm -hmm. All eulogies and praise to God alone. So what we say, Christ said the same thing give credit and adulation to God. Of his own free will, he can do nothing. So Islam comes as the completion of God's law upon to mankind. God says in the Quran, today. Makes much uh, more sense. Excellent. And it said, today I have completed my favor upon to you. It's a very interesting choice of words. Today I have completed my favor upon to you and chosen for you Islam as a means for you to live. I find this verse very interesting. It's what it shows. It, amalgamates and accepts that God gave divinely revealed scripture to the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. However, they transgressed, which you concluded as well, and they you know, corrupted their text and so forth. So God then takes the responsibility upon himself as a final revelation to mankind to eventuate um, one, how one should live one's life. And Islam hence makes the most sense. So in terms of your further reading, that can be done at a stage which is gradual. However, what you've said, it, in essence, that makes you a Muslim. And that's not just me saying it by ver verbiage. Yeah. So simply, if you, you are already a Muslim, the other additional things you will learn at your slow pace gradually. I would encourage you today to become a Muslim. And it's not difficult at all. At all. As I may mention, you testify something which you already believe that there's only one God. God sends messengers which you've already read the Quran. It's much more coherent. Everything is so straightforward. So I would invite you to accept it right here, right now. And it's nothing difficult. I'm not ready to do that. You're not ready to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, neither am I. Something that I take extremely seriously. Absolutely. I would hasten to add, however, that one should not look to procrastinate too much. But at your, I'm not putting any pressure on you, just at your own pace. But however, if it makes sense, don't delay, as they say. Because the fundamental of what the religion invokes is what you believe in. And everything can be learned at a gradual process. So for example, Muslim women, they cover themselves, as you're aware, yes. head to toe. And this is something which is also biblical as well. The women, we saw the images of Mary, for example. It's mentioned in the Bible that a woman should cover herself. Now, if I was your wife, yes, yeah. yes. Would what I'm wearing now be unacceptable? Um, not necessarily unacceptable in totality, no. Because you're but still I would need to cover my head. 
yeah, you were, you were close to because that's even a choice for the women. Although the verses are clear in the Quran that a believing woman must put her outer garments over. But in some instances where that is the God's law, there is no drastic push towards doing it, although it is a necessity. But there's no like overwhelming burden upon the man to do so. But it's a commandment of God nevertheless. So once you invoke that, that's something that you'll want to do yourself. Yes. So how, as you are currently dressed, oh, we wouldn't take great exception. In scheme of things, my clothes aren't kind of important. Exactly. You're loosely dressed in many you know, regards. If I had the worst clothes in my head, yes. it was something I believed in, then, you know, it, it, that's not a big deal. Absolutely. And I, I know now. Because, yeah. you know, and things which we are, yeah. White, white Christian Western people have this huge idea that you know, Muslim women are oppressed, but they've never been to the Middle East and spoke to, to, to terrible, a Terrible, terrible indictment upon the society, because even in this, where we're standing today, 115 years ago, women would be dressed like Muslim women. Yeah. If you travel from one place to another, you'd wear the... All the way down. Yeah. And not just that, you'd even wear the, the outer garment where the woman couldn't... When the woman would travel across the forests, she would be wearing a, a garment which you can't even see her face. Forget about seeing anything else. Mm -hmm. Totally, actually, like the burqa women. So what happened... But see, your skin colour yes. is different. Yeah. So that means it's something nefarious. And I'm not saying that yeah. it's, that's the way it is. I'm saying that's the thinking. Yes. Uh, I mean, especially where I come from in America. You know, I was raised in a household where I was told that it doesn't matter what skin color you are, you're equal. Everybody's equal. But don't you bring one of them home. Don't well, you bring one of them home. Yeah, unfortunately so, yes. That's, that's, that's the mentality. Yes. But however, I don't believe these people are um, intrinsically evil. There's no. just that concept of ignorance. ignorance. And there's also that concept of there are certain other factors of work which have led into this um, Caucasian superiority. It's not, totally. yeah, yeah, and it's to do with other people, White other privilege. entities. I totally yes. believe in it. But what I'm saying is not as simple as that. There are other factors who are pushing that. And I don't want to say on camera because we're being filmed. Oh but yeah, and I don't want to, but what, what I'm talking about in terms of who's behind the deconstruction of Christianity. Did you know, for example, in here in the UK, in economic structures of banking and so forth, interest dealings were strictly forbidden. It was Christians fought furiously against the entities who introduced these concepts. But they allowed the Jews to, to, to money lend, and then when they borrowed all their money, they killed them. And what they did eventually, they it, interest dealing was only they, only given to the, the non-Gentiles or the non-Jews. They didn't charge interest amongst themselves, the Jews. So they infiltrated these societies. Now what we're saying now could be deemed controversial, but such is the way they have um, cornered the world media. That anything you say contrary to that, they will jump on you and say, oh, anti-Semitic. Yeah. They've got that. There was, a, there was a Labour leader here, a very pleasant chap. His name is Jeremy Corbyn. Okay, uh, yeah, very thoroughly gen gentle person who observe, observe the, um, uh, you know, the difficulties, difficulties and the um, downright, um, um, uh, you know, um, oppression of the Palestinians. Oh, and he spoke okay. up. I'm, I'm right on that. And he spoke up. And yeah. people within the Labour backbench committee of the Labour Party who got friends of Israel connections, the, the Israeli bandwagon got in, into full shape. And what did they do? They immediately castigated him and vilified him as, as being an anti-Semite because he showed apathy and sympathy towards these innocent people. Anyone that fails to recognize or understand um, how we ended up with what we ended up with in Palestine is doing themselves a great disservice because it's really the Balfour Agreement. And 1917, this country, yes. This country, Great Britain, which I love, yeah. um, this country is responsible for that. Yes, it is responsible. It's responsible for a lot of what the world's issues yeah. in Kashmir, in India, in all the world's pr trouble spots, it caused a lot of these issues. And Kashmir, for example, which is in like, northern Pakistan, north um, West India, as a result of the way the British partitioned the country, you know, you get tremendous oppression of the indigenous people, which has been going on for many decades. So when they fight back, they're referred to as being the word terrorist. They're coined as terrorists. But when it comes to their own country, if anyone, like in here in the UK, I remember vividly, there were portrayals of had the Germans come across and taken over the country, the British would have had their methods in place to sacrifice themselves in fighting off the German invasion. Sacrifice themselves. So, but, so this oppression which has been taken through history has been rather, uh, rather obscene to say the least. But in terms of yourself and how uh, you know, the understanding of Islam would, would be somewhat um, incumbent upon yourself, it's because Islam is a universal religion in the it sense is. it's for everyone. And it is a religion of peace. An original peace. Precisely. Because you attain peace 
but it's also a religion where you don't take nonsense. Uh, yeah, and then there yes. is none of this. You don't take this, like, you, turn you the other cheek. You don't have a man in a dress, yeah. you know, halfway across the world, telling you that Mary flew up to heaven. Yes. A divine being. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, this is ordained, and this is what you have to believe. Precisely. It, it's nuts. Yes, it's nuts. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. So, in effect, what, what we're trying to say is that for your for yourself particular the stage where you are where you have to investigate further remember one thing you you believe in those fundamental those are the fundamental points what's left for you to investigate i wouldn't become a perfectionist there are many people who are on the cusp of becoming muslims but they are looking for perfection and that but that is i don't have very long to live so i'm, oh. I'm doing very yeah, I have uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, oh. and I'm in, I'm in the third stage of it. Oh, so sad to hear that. I'm not going to that tomorrow, but okay. you know, I'm definitely not going to see retirement or anything like that. Oh. And so it's cost me to study, and to trust think. me, I know the time is, is not it's on nice. my side. Yeah, but it's not, it's not, but I wouldn't, you know what, we're, we're all going to go off to a better place, an eternal abode. Totally, and I'm not worried about, uh, my, ch my child, I had a son, he's grown and he's gone. Okay. So to me, that would be number one. Of course, I, you know, I'm not ready to leave my husband. Whatever, but I know that, that, um, that there is something else. I'm so, I mean, so uh, you know, it's touched me what you said about your health. However, what I would say to you as a source of encouragement is no need to procrastinate much further because it's very fundamental to accept your creator. He's given us everything. The least we cannot acknowledge is, is that creator. And we're going to return to him, you see. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was discussing this with my sister who's very not religious. And uh, she said, how do you believe this? I mean, who do you think gave you cancer? And I'm like, I gave myself cancer. I smoked for years. I ate the wrong food, you know? Yes. Things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, okay, carry on. <laughs> Bit of an oddball. <laughs> You'll get all different types of people. Uh, yeah. yeah. He looks a little odd. Anyway, um, God's creature. Bless him. Um, bless him. Yeah. Let's yes. may, may he be... Um, um, that's where I'm going to be for a little bit longer, but trust me, I know, I know you what know. I need to do. Good. So when you already take that he's step, he's working on me. He's working on you, and I'm sure <laughs> these conversations by God's will can help. It's nothing on my eloquence which has, you know, um, made, made you consider. However, it's what Allah says is that he's put in each and every one of us, intrinsically within us, a recognition of him. No matter who we are, where we are, we will always come to a juncture where we will con contemplate our Creator. If you reject him out of conceit or arrogance the eternal abode is not going to be very satisfactory for those who reject our creator it's the most disgraceful thing to do in our concept because he's given us everything we, there was a time where we were nothing he gave us life he gave us everything we should be eternally grateful and hence i would highly encourage you to say that i don't want to delay you any further as muslims what we, what we see what it is in further information that this may yes. often when us uh, not really on that this particular issue of handshaking, but as Muslim men, we then yes. And the reason for that, it's it, some people it may sound somewhat backward, but in our recognition, any type of um, physicality, even if it's a handshake, is between yourself and your close male associates. For example, your husband, your son, your nephews, your gra your grandchildren. I know, and you're right, and, and no, people, yeah, I mean, no. I'll be but honest, I if I were... You don't know my husband, but you still respect him. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. So this is why, because this is why we're very, you know, ordained to make sure that, um, you know, physicality in relationships is between husband and wife. You know, we that see that, uh, it's precise, and we see what happens as a result of decadence, which is spread in society. We can see everything. I mean, I can, I can reel off a series of unbelievable stats from your country in which um, children who do not have fathers, where they suffer. Uh, you don't Some, need to tell me. I, need, I don't need to tell, but I, I know mean, for I got pregnant when I was 17 years old. I had my child when I was 18, but I married his father. Fantastic. Um, okay. And we did divorce um, because it was a marriage because of the pregnancy. But we have always maintained a good relationship with the same. Um, and I'm the husband that I have now. I mean, we've been together for 15 years. So, but I still feel, you know, yeah. But see, in our religion, divorce is acceptable only on the premise that you've tried everything to try to rectify a marriage. If it hasn't worked, then God is not going to curtail you by that, you see. So in that respect, divorce is allowed in many circumstances, you see. Yeah. That's fine. Exquisite. So again, I would hasten for you. I don't want to keep it because you need to go. Yes. 
I mean, I'm really, first of all, I'll pray to God that you know he, Allah guides you, and that we're, we're only going to be we'll probably never see each other again. However, the point still remains that we're going to be in front of Him one day, and we, we need to make preparation. I hope so. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Alif Mustafa, delighted to meet you. Take care. Take care.